Now the game that you're about to watch is insane. I'm going to continue showing you how strong players calculate three moves in advance and how they make their pre-moves look so easy playing the entire game in advance even before you make your move. I do this all the time and it's one of the reasons why I keep on losing my elos because I don't just listen. But anyways, you will be entertained. So the first part of this video is where I'll challenge a random chess player on chess.com in an effort to show you how strong players make pre-moves and beat their opponents easily. And in the second part of this video, I'm going to give a slow analysis for the sake of you guys who are going to find my pre-moves confusing and a little bit fast. Let's go. Right. Again, let's go with the pre-moves. Now I'm playing against a 2062 rated chess player. So knight f3. Let's play the tennis on gambit or the intercontinental ballistic missile. <laughs> so I'm going to play the moves that I'm highlighting on the board, beginning with e4. And then I'll take with my last square bishop. So e4, knight g5, d3, bishop takes. Yep. So I have played like three moves in advance. Uh-oh, I was wrong. I thought black was going to play knight to f6 and take on d3. Uh, and then after which I was going to take with my last square bishop. So <laughs> all these moves were made in advance. And now I'm forced to take on d3 like this, which is a very bad thing. And that's why it's not always good to pre-move. For example, if I played queen b3 in advance, I was going to maybe run into pawn to h6 and lose my knight on g5. Yeah, so there we see pawn to h6 now, knight e4. And now it is safe to play f3, f takes e4, and then castle short. Again, I have played three moves in advance because I don't see any serious attacks from black. So this is when the line is over, now waiting for black to make a move. Okay, there we see bishop d6. I think now I can go queen g4. Yeah, I should not pre-move because it is not safe to pre-move right now. <laughs> Black may play a5. Now I'm attacking the g7 pawn, by the way. Knight c3, just in case. Yeah. So I pre-moved knight c3, though that was dangerous. I mean, what if Black played pawn to f5? I was going to lose my queen. Wait a second. Queen takes d3 is a mistake because it allows me to go queen h5, is it? And then bishop g5 next. Is this right? And Or maybe I should go rook d1 first. I'm thinking. I want to go queen h5, bishop g5 next. I'm attacking the bishop, the dark squad bishop, by the way, and threatening to take on f7. Oh, did I miss bishop d4? Wait, that bishop is free. Queen takes e5. Wow, so black just lost the free bishop. And now we see knight d7. I think I can pre-move here. It is safe for me to pre-move queen takes c7 and then queen back to g3 or king h1, queen takes c7, queen g3, then pawn takes, I mean h takes g3. I'm sure these are the moves that are going to happen. Okay, there we see knight to f6 by black. So I've played all these things in advance. Ah, there we see another blunder. Knight takes e4. Wow. Okay, so... I'm up by two pieces with a superior position. Oh, my opponent is now offering a draw. Nope. Why should I accept your draw offer? I mean, this does not make sense. So, game number two. I just won another game with pre-moves. Wow. Okay, my opponent just resigned, which is a sign of respect. Thank you so much. Now it is time to do a quick analysis. So, I'll be slow just to run you through the moves, ensuring that you understand what I was doing. Let's go. Right. Now, let's see how this game went so that I can make a point. So I started with knight to f3, my favorite Zuka to opening. Then black responded with d5, and then I played e4. I know all this. So it was at this point where I made a series of pre-moves, expecting my opponent to accept my tennis on gambit. So after d takes, I played knight g5, counter-attacking the pawn. Like, I just wanted to get it back, right? So by this time, I was expecting my opponent to play knight to f6, which is why I pre-moved moved pawn to d3 in the hope that if black takes, I would then take back with my light squad bishop. But to my surprise, my opponent played bishop f5. Well, I already removed d3. <laughs> and so my opponent just took my pawn. 
and I couldn't take back with my light squad bishop, did I? Oh yeah, I did take back with my light squad bishop, but most of the times what I like doing is going queen f3, attacking this bishop and also posing a threat on b7, so that maybe on the next move, I can freely take on d3 without trading off my light squad bishop. But anyways, since I was pre-moving, bishop takes d3 was played automatically. <laughs> What a shame. And then black took as expected, after which I slowed down a bit and then I took back with my C pawn on D3. Now wait a second. If this was a bullet match, these are moments where you see most strong players playing a little bit slow. This is when they stop pre-moving and think for a while. Cause say if you just go on and pre-move something like queen B3 to attack the B7 pawn and also the F7 pawn, you might end up being in trouble because in this case, black has many deadly options, one of which is pawn to H6. So if you pre-move queen B3, they'll simply take your knight on G5. So this is what most strong players do when there's a possibility for their opponent to attack their piece and capture it on the next move, they slow down a bit and take time to think. So they only make pre-moves when the position is too obvious and safe. So in this case, I took a bit of time waiting to see what my opponent wanted to do. So they played h6 and then I just retreated. My idea was just to go queen e2 and maybe someday go knight takes f6 in case of knight f6 for black, messing up black spawn structure on the king side. And anyway, my opponent still played knight to f6. And what did I do here? Did I take? No, because I feared helping black to develop his pieces smoothly, you know, help black to pave way for his locked dark squared bishop. So noticing that black had no any serious attacks, I decided to make a series of pre-moves once again, beginning with a move point to f3, then I pre-moved f takes e4, and then I also pre-moved castle short because there is no danger. So you can see I'm only making moves that won't expose me to my opponent's threats, just in case my prediction goes wrong, at least my pieces are going to be safe. I think I didn't pre-move bishop e3 here for some reason, but anyways, let's see how the game continued. So f3, true to my prediction, all these things happened successfully, and then black played bishop d6. Yeah, so I did not pre-move bishop e3 in advance, even though that was going to be a safe move. So that might also give you an idea of what most strong players do. They only calculate like three moves ahead of the game. And you might say this is the best example of intuition once again. So I played queen g4 here just to, you know, cause some chaos. In case of castle short, I was going to take on h6. That was my brainchild. So I think by this time I slowed down a bit cause I wasn't too sure of what was going to happen. I can't just remove bishop takes h6, right? Cause I don't know if black is going to castle short or not. And then I can't make any pre-move here. First of all, my queen on g4 is not that safe. What if I just remove knight c3 and then black plays pawn to f5? It means after f5, knight c3 will happen. That's what pre-move means. And then that will allow black to take my innocent queen since I already played knight c3 in advance. That's what a pre-move is once again. So that's why I did not pre-move in this position. I mean, after I played queen g4, waiting to see what black was up to. So black here played bishop e5. And then this is when I played knight c3. And after queen takes, I couldn't pre-move once again because the position is not that clear and I'm not that safe. But I realized one thing here that my opponent somehow blundered by taking, though not really a blunder. So I saw this move queen h5, but I think I could have done better. Here it seems like bishop f4 was much stronger, trying to get rid of the dark squad bishop and attacking the c7 pawn indirectly and also trying to introduce the other rook into the game but since this was just a demo trying to show you how removing works i played queen h5 which is another point you might want to jot down so in blitz and bullet chess strong players like making a lot of attacking moves giving you time to think they just want to waste your time. Most of those moves are not even strong, just to be honest with you. Black is clearly winning in this position. All they need to do is just to play bishop d4 check. And in case of king h1, they simply queen takes f1 met. So if bishop d4 check happened, I was going to be forced donating my rook. And then this was going to be very bad. But in blitz, 
players have very low time to think. And that's why my opponent here blundered with something like Castle Shot, right? And that's how we win most of these games. It's not by brilliancies, perfect moves. Most strong players just rely on their opponent's mistakes. They just keep on attacking to increase their opponent's chances to blunder, especially in Blitz and Bullet. Right, so after Castle Shot, what did I do next? I just took a free bishop there. And then after knight d7, again I pre-moved queen takes c7, queen g3, and pawn takes. I played all these in advance because these were safe moves. Queen takes, my opponent played knight to f6, and then I played queen g3, then queen takes, pawn takes, all this happened. And my pre-moves kind of confused my opponent. I mean, for him to just go ahead and take on e4, that explains everything. So I just went on to take that free piece, because it was just free, right? And this is where my opponent resigned. So nothing much. This is exactly how strong players take advantage of pre-moves against their lower rated opponents because number one they know their openings very well and number two they just want to beat you psychologically they play by intuition number three they only pre-move non-committal moves or developmental moves that position their pieces on the most attacking squares and lastly strong players only make pre-moves that are safe or when their pieces are safe so this was just to show you how most strong players make pre-moves in their minds at least ahead of time or how they calculate three moves in advance but just like i stated in the intro do not be deceived playing like this won't really improve your chess you only do it for fun and only if you want to test your intuition or how experienced you are and it's a shame on my part i regret disclosing this to you guys i like doing this nonsense most of the times when i'm playing on chess.com and leeches i just make pre-moves while laying back or sleeping on my bed which is not a good thing because i just end up throwing my elos for content's sake i'm a bad guy but anyways just take this lesson as an exercise and see how best you can apply this kind of a skill in your games and lastly yes even in longer time control matches like classical chess we do think ahead of time we do pre-move in our minds we don't think while holding a piece no so we usually think in our opponent's time and before pre-moving make sure that your pieces cannot be attacked immediately or are in safe zones right this is all for today you guys i hope you enjoyed watching this video until next time have a wonderful day and hey be sure to hit the like button subscribe to my channel and also get my free e5 defense course which you can find on my website or on my patreon page which is my membership page that you can also join for free. All the links are in the comment section down below. And thank you so much to all my patrons. I've got some very interesting premium content that I'm going to post just for you guys. So stay tuned and wait for the best. Bye bye.